You can buy that one. So I'll tell you cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful where you stand in that one. Yeah. We literally had to borrow a forklift to get it off of the truck. Oh my, that's a feature. I'm really happy with where the Mustang is. The engine is running great. This rebuilt 302 is producing somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 horsepower. The disc brakes out front are magnificent. There's no delay in the stoppage. The undercarriage is quiet and smooth with the new Prothane bushing kit. I have no more clunks and clanks from underneath. The car rides smooth, it rides tight. And I'm sure that the Shelby drop and the new coils help ride from up front. The track extensions on the seat put the driver back in a much more reasonable driving position. It's extremely comfortable. And the steering wheel, it's that cool. It feels so good. I really love the steering wheel. Mechanically, the car is really in pretty good shape. The interior, also in really good shape. Now I'm starting to think about how to finish up the outside. The wife loves the fastback. I kind of like the fastback too, although in 69 and 70, the coupe I actually think looks pretty good. I'm not clamoring for it, but I'm interested in it. Lost Socket Garage in Salt Lake City has been doing fastback conversions for a while. The plan is to drive this car over there and talk to Hunter about what is involved in the fastback? What does it take? What do you get out of it? Obviously the VIN code states that it's a coupe. So you know, how does that affect things? We're gonna take a trip over to Lost Socket Garage and see what we can learn about fastback conversion. We found them. There it is. Yeah, that's Damn. a sign that you're in the right place. That Mustang right there. When you come across a fastback Mustang, just hanging out in parking lot does. somewhere. The crew. Hunter, I'm Nate. Good to meet you guys. Likewise. Sorry, we had a... How long have you been in here, Hunter? About a year and a half. In, this, in, this, in this spot, yeah. And yeah. is this where you started it all? Uh, in my driveway, actually. You started it all yeah. in your driveway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have a two-post lift in your driveway? No. We had sun beaten down and uh, some jack stands and kind of just the made it The true driveway mechanic. Yeah, so we had, we had uh, two 67s to start with. One ended up being a, uh, an Eleanor clone, uh, and the other one we just ended up selling as a roller. Who's Same. we, by the way? Oh, uh, Chris, who's in the office right now. Oh, hey, Chris. Yeah, we've been friends for quite a while. And then you just decided in your driveway one day to chop up a coupe and turn it into a fastback. I mean, it was something Chris was brewing on for, for a while. I mean, I've always loved muscle cars. I've had a lot of different cars. Japanese classic, a few domestic classics. Always been a real big car guy. I was at a gig that I didn't really enjoy that much anymore during, during COVID. We're like, hey, let's chop some cars up. I never even would have considered converting it. It seems pretty invasive. Very invasive, yeah. So where, I like, did you have one? Here's the other difference. If you've got one that's trash anyway, mm -hmm. it's way easier to chop it and put a new thing in it. If you've got one that's in pretty good shape, it feels, for me, psychologically, it would be more difficult to do. Psychologically, it's, it is more difficult to do, but when you're looking at the actual measurements and, and doing the conversion, something that's kind of together and, and we know is straight already is going to make a conversion a lot shorter. I mean, we've done our share of cutting out part of a floor and then realizing that it's not just the floor rotted out. It's, you know, the torque boxes, it's the frame rails, it's blah, blah, blah. We get into it and there's nothing left of the car. But what was the first victim, dare I ask? You said you had one you were doing in the driveway. That one was one we named Thelma. Uh, we have like a video series on it on our YouTube and that one ended up going to Texas just as a roller. You did it on your own or for somebody? We did it on our own. But we then got somebody a, out of Texas bought correct, it from you. as a roller. Okay. Yeah, so we sell rollers as well. When we come across good deals on coupes, we'll go ahead and, and you know, buy the car ourselves. We'll, you know, put the work into it and then sell it as a roller. In fact, this one is a roller. It doesn't Kinda roll rapping. very well yet. No, it doesn't roll real well. <laughs> It might float better than it rolls. Yeah, that's that's half our suspension for it over there. We sell our rollers to where it's pretty turnkey, where all it's going to need is glass and interior and drivetrain. This one we did the conversion on. Uh, we're doing all new suspension on it. Typically, you keep them stock, or do you sometimes put the like the Mustang 2 stuff in? We it? do a lot of stuff with the Mustang 2. Most of the time, it makes sense for people just to go ahead and do the Mustang 2. Well, while two. you're there, right? I mean, that's invasive, too. You're really a fab shop. Pretty close, yeah. That's pretty much what we do. You're, um, you're putting it, you're chopping off a back end, you're putting a mm -hmm. new back end on it, you're welding everything together, you're prepping it and priming it, and uh -huh. then shipping it off for folks to finish it and put engines in it and whatever else they want to do in Correct. it. Correct. We have we have done full restorations. This is a 67 uh, S-code that's a true fastback. Um, this guy picked this car up for, what was it, like 30? It was a little under 30 grand and it was in a bunch of different boxes and it was a couple of different colors. 
So we've actually gone through and done a full restoration. It's got the original 390 big block in it. A lot that, of stuff going on. That's your paint booth right there? Yeah. Awesome. Pretty much. I got one almost just like. I want to talk a little bit about economics, and I want yeah. to talk a little bit about structure, fabrication. Sure. Economically, uh -huh. the fastback just brings more value it than does. the coupe. It does. Which uh -huh. is... One of the major reasons you would do it. The other is probably the curb appeal. Some people just like the lines better of the mock, which may also or the fastback, which may also be why it brings a higher value. What kind of a discount do you have to offer when the VIN code doesn't match the body? It's a good question. Honestly, you know, a car's worth what you can sell it for. So there are VIN aficionados out there that will look at a fastback and say, well, the Venn's wrong, this was a coupe to start with, I don't want it. And they're more of a purist. The discount, if you put them head to head, I mean, you're probably, when they're all done, you're probably at a, about a ten to $15,000 difference, maybe a little bit more depending on the build itself. I could put this one next to that one and you wouldn't be able to tell mm -hmm. which one is the real fastback. We're using real fastback metal. We're dealers for Dynacorn. And basically, they have the Ford stamping rights, so we just cut it off and replace it with fastback metal. So the only way that you can tell these cars apart is the VIN number. So if you really like the line of the fastback, the VIN doesn't make any difference. If you're a collector, it makes a big difference. Then, then you care. Correct. Yeah. So I'm seeing mostly the sixty five to 68 vintage in here. Is that right? Is that most of what you do? Yeah, we have, we have the 65 out there, which is just a coupe. With all of our conversions, the majority of them are 66 through 68. Um, it kind of breaks down 65, 66, then 67, 68, and then 69 and 70. The reason for that is Dynacorn sells a pre-welded side assembly. They only make pre-welded side assemblies for 65 and 66 and 69 and 70. I have a coupe. Cool. It's a 1970. Awesome. And for me, right, everybody's got their own preference, so nobody take any offense. For me, the is a 64 and a half is when it was introduced yep. through 68. Bar none, the fastback looks better than the coupe. Mm -hmm. It's kind of got this little flat trunk. It looks like a secretary car. Yeah. Which, if I understand correctly, is actually why the Mustang was built in the first Correct. place. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's beside the point. Yep. The 69 and the 70, I'm a little more kind of even keel on. I, I, mm -hmm. I quite like the coupe. Mm -hmm. I, if I were sure, if you give me the choice, I'll take the fastback over sure. the coupe. It's worth more and it looks a little more aggressive. Mm -hmm. But I don't mind the 70 and the 69 in a coupe. Mm -hmm. My wife, on the other hand, really, really wants the fastback. Oh, shoot. So. <laughs> we all know which way you're going to lean so, now then. So, right. <laughs> uh, let's just understand who makes the decisions in the family. <laughs> so, anyway, it's a, would you mind, let's, if we walked out and yeah. just looked at it for a minute, and there are a lot. So, I'm mechanically pretty sound at this point, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to decide what's next. One option is clean it up and paint it. The other option is chop it up. Mm -hmm. And as mentioned, it's easy for me to chop something up when it's already in tough shape. Sure, yeah. This one doesn't look too bad. So this one was kind of a crime of opportunity. I actually wasn't looking, and then I stumbled across it on the classifieds and, and decided that I kind of needed to do it. Sure. We redid the engine in it. I've gone through the undercarriage and redone all the, the bushings. It's got the, the Shelby drop up front yep. and coil and... It's got new shocks in it, but they're just KYB kind of standard stuff, sure. nothing special. Wheels came on it, tires came on it, just like it is. I've done nothing to the exterior, really. Okay. And very little to the interior. My proudest moment is actually the steering wheel that I put on there that the classic guys will hate me for, but that I love. It adds 50 horsepower, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yes, it does. Anyway, that's where it is. Where does the cut begin? What happens on here if you sure. do a fast Sure. So basically what we do, we cut off the quarter panels, basically everything from the B pillars back and everything quarter panel and up leaves. It's gone. So is there a seam in here somewhere? Or is this all, that's all one piece in here, isn't it? All no, the way back here? No, no, no. So there's a seam here I can see. There, right. So this is a, this is a filler panel right here. Okay. Um, a new, we get a new one of that. Normally there's going to be, they filled um, this area as well as where the roof connects to the A pillar. They filled that with like either brass or bronze or sometimes lead. Okay. Uh, so if you if you strip, for example, this section down, 
you're going to see where the roof actually connects here, um, and it's going to be it's going to have a little lead right okay. there. And then on the front, essentially what we do is we just cut the roof off, and then. <laughs> We just cut it off. Oh, that's the best part of the whole thing, man. <laughs> Trust me. I'm in there with the saws all just going, Aah! I'm happy the entire time. So right here, it's going to be the same thing. There's going to be like lead or bronze or something like that in here as filler. Okay. That's going to be separate from the A-pillar. Uh, we take the windshield out, and then we're going to cut out all of the um, spot welds along here, and then take the take the roof off completely. There are spot, where are spot welds here? The spot welds oh, are the, underneath right, right here. Right there. Yeah, Got it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And around around this corner. So once we take that off, basically, it's an A pillar sticking up, and it has a little mount that kind of looks like an L right here. And then there's a support bar that goes around the front, that all the way across the front. It's uh, it's under your your headliner right here. You can see. We keep the A pillars where they are, stock A pillars. We keep the uh, the cross member, the front roof brace. Keep that. Don't need to touch it. We keep as much as we can in the same spot. The B pillars, we're actually, majority of the time, we'll try to keep the B pillars. Mm -hmm. So we keep the front of the B pillar where it is. That way, for example- There's nothing we, else for reference, right? You yeah. Can't. So when we close the door, we know that your door gap here is okay right now. I mean, it could be tightened a little bit, but for reference, we want the door gap to be pretty damn good and we say, okay, well, if we keep the front of the B pillar and we cut off everything in the back, then we know that as long as your quarter wraps around here, that your door gap is gonna be the same as yeah. it started. Okay. So uh, sometimes we'll replace the B pillar, but it always goes back in the exact same spot that it came from factory. We don't adjust that at all. Um, you know, we don't, I mean, we do but take But if you've got a good here. one, you'll leave it in. Uh -huh. if, if it's got some structural problems or rust, maybe mm -hmm. you may cut it out and put in a different one. Correct. Yep. Okay. And so then uh, everything, obviously quarter comes off, the roof comes off, the trunk comes off, the tail panel, it depends on what you want to do. If you Is want that to different? Uh, on the 69 and 70s, I th think it's the same. I'm not 100% sure. On every other year, it's the same. Mm. So... You know, we have the options to switch out. I mean, while we're in there, we can switch over to a Shelby tail panel, which is originally it was made as a fiberglass overlay that just s sat right on top and made it one long tail light or two long tail lights rather. Yeah. It was a fiberglass overlay, but now people make a, p a ton of metal ones. And when you can go metal, go metal. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, metal tail panels that we throw in here. If the tail panel is damaged or if they want to switch it up and do a Shelby one, Inner structure all comes out that's in there right now uh, that's behind your back seat panels and everything. So the thing is is very, very cut down. There are wheel wells left. How much of the interior has to be gutted? Do you leave dash and stuff installed or does it need to come out? Um, we prefer if the carpet comes out, if the interior is gutted as much as possible, but dash can stay. We just throw a welding blanket over it typically um, but the more you take out, the easier it is for us. So in theory then, when you're done, what I would pick up is a primed exterior finished, no glass in the rear, Correct. no glass on the sides. Correct. Um, the seat has to be swapped out, I think I heard. Correct. For like yeah. a hold down. Mm -hmm. What other work needs to be done after I pick it up? That's pretty much it. Putting the glass in, paint and body. Ideally, you get a shell and it gets built up from the ground up the way I want it built. Not, let's just take enough off to make it work. Although that can work, the ideal scenario is gut it down and rebuild it. Correct. You mentioned the 69 and the 70 are a little more than the 67 and older. Mm -hmm. Is it 15K zip code? I mean, what, roughly. Yeah, yeah. so it, it, the total for uh, parts and labor is about 15. I think it's 15 or five mm -hmm. ish. And then I'll need to be prepared to pony up a few, a couple thousand, it sounds like, to round it out. Seats yes. and windows. Yeah. And, and we, do, we do offer some packages that actually, you know, what we consider kind of like uh, upgraded conversions where we'll order the glass for you as well and we'll order the fold-down seat for you as well. They all come from the same place anyway. So, okay. you know, it's not, not a big deal for us to order all that stuff for you unless you want to source it yourself. 
that car is yours, what do you do? Oh, with fastback it? all day, bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fastback all day. You know, I'm terribly partial, by the way, but you, you know, are <laughs> weird, right? <laughs> um, Who knew? Yeah, but I mean, I do like the coupes, the '69 and '70 coupes. They're okay. I feel like that they tried to kind of bridge the gap between a it fastback. It is. It's kind and of halfway between, isn't yeah. it? If you compare the lines here to even the. What, 65, you said, that's sitting right here? Yeah. It's not that kind of that square, open, put luggage here kind of a feel. If you don't have a special attachment to it as a coupe, I think a fastback, especially 69 and 70, I think that's the way to go. But, you know, only you and your wife can decide that. That's right. <laughs> what is, uh, what's a typical timeline? Like, what's your... And I know this varies, but generally sure. speaking, are you how far out, right? What's your lead? And then once you've got it, how long does it take you to do it? Yeah, it's a good question. It takes about uh, four to six months to get all the parts. Um, after we have the parts and take delivery of the vehicle, it takes us about two weeks to four weeks. About two weeks, if all we're doing is a conversion, um, we kind of highball it at a month just in case something throws us for a loop, which... You know, it happens, but we're pretty good at this stuff by now. Four to six months gets the parts in, and then you've, that means with a, about a month from the time I drop the car to the time I pick it up. Yep. Hmm. Yep. But that would even include time for sandblasting. You can buy that one, sell it to you cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful where you stand in that one. Yeah. 10 grand as it sits. <laughs> as it sits, doesn't roll, as it sits. Wait. That's what you had to pay to get it hauled to the junkyard? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but there's more holes than metal in that one. Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, honestly, it's worth every penny. Mm -hmm. That's the crazy thing. That's, that's the market right now. So we literally had to borrow a forklift to get it off of the truck. Dissuade it. It looks prettier, but not that, much. that came with tilt wheel. No yeah. wonder it's, no wonder it's 10 grand. Yeah. <laughs> tilt wheel, man. You gotta have tilt wheel. Worth every penny. Worth every penny. Hunter, thank you. Of course. Appreciate the time. Yeah, no worries. That was very educational. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll take that back and, you know, float it around and see where it goes. And... Thank you, Hunter, at Lost Socket Garage. That was very helpful, very informative. I have a lot to think about. If this thing were a basket case, it would be a no-brainer. Tear it apart, start from the bones, work your way up. But in this case, the bones are actually solid. Right now, my gut says that this car is structurally sound. It's pretty well put together. It looks pretty darn good. I'm a little hesitant to chop it up. And as much as I really like the fastback look, the coupe in 69 and 70 looks pretty sharp. Hey, we'll keep that option open. We'll catch you next time.